Alright, what's up YouTube? This is Box Away. Before I get started, um, I just want to thank everyone that's been supporting the channel. Okay, and um, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel, okay? Um, you'll be surprised. I go to I, I go to a lot of fights, okay? You guys know, excuse me, that um, you know, usually when I go to a fight, I'll do a review from the fight, the actual fight, how you know the crowd was and how the event overall was. So you guys been subscribed to me, you know I always do these type of videos. I usually do them as soon as I get home from the event, but I didn't go home. I went out partying, and, you know, I, I'm just now doing this Monday. I'm just now doing a review from the fight on Saturday, okay? Uh, but be aware, and this goes out to you YouTubers, the guys that do videos like myself. The boxers do listen to your videos okay they know who you are especially if you are sitting in front of the camera like myself they do pay attention to what's going on and what you say on here they do like to listen to what the fans are saying they just don't do the interviews and they you know they 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 don't just tune in to what the media says they actually go on youtube especially the up and coming guys they actually listen and they actually watch youtube so just let you guys know what you say on here. It's important. I've been new this, okay, because I've been followed by um, plenty of boxers, okay, on social media, and that's that's seen my videos, all right. And I've met some of these guys. I run into them at fights. Every time I go to a fight, I've always run into these guys, all right. I see a lot of guys, guys that I criticize on this camera, okay, and there's guys that I I showed a lot of love and support and sometimes i run into both of them you know at fights so but it's always good you know i've never been disrespectful to any of these guys on here so it, it's always been love even when i wasn't so you know i, I didn't say the, the nicest things about them i never was disrespectful so i've always run into a lot of guys when i go to the fights okay um so let's, let's speak about the fight i'm gonna speak about the event um I I want to say I came in maybe I seen about five fights when I was there. Right? Normally I come in the very beginning and see like all of the fights, like all eight fights or whatever. Uh, but I came in and in Madison Square Garden they have a theater. If you're not you never been there before, there's two separate parts now. There's the main Madison Square Garden, the main arena where they have the basketball games, the Knicks, the Rangers. You know, all the concerts and stuff. And then they have a theater now, which is still big, but it's not nearly as massive as the actual garden. All right. They have the Madison Square Garden Theater. And they have fights there, but usually the smaller fights, you know, not the mega fights like the Mel Miguel Cotto fights, the Golovkin fights now. Um, the smaller fights are usually at the theater, which is cool. It's not a big deal. But um, I want to say that. The theater was packed. I mean, out of all of the times that I've been there, this was definitely one of the most packed times. Um, when I showed up, like I said, there was still about three or four fights until um, the co-main event, which was uh, Phyllis Bendejo. And I would like to say, when, when I walked in, it was already packed. Like, it was almost full. Um, the only empty seats were, like, closer to the ring. All right, but as far as the crowd, it was the audience, it was packed, okay? Um, so I think they did a good job. I mean, for Terrence Crawford to have his fight here in New York, and I know it's not the main Madison Garden place, but there was dudes, it was so many people in there that there was dudes in there sharing seats, like literally, like the guys, there was a bunch of Phyllis Verdejo fans. I don't know if they was family or fans or whatever, but these dudes was all scrunched up together in a row in front of me, cheering for Vendejo. And they was all squeezed in the chairs together. It was it was that crazy. It was that packed in there. Um, there was a f Irish fighter from either Queens or Brooklyn on the undercard. And he had a lot of fans out there. Okay, I don't know his name. Um, but he was on the undercard like maybe three, four fights before the main event. And... This guy had a whole bunch of fans out there. Felix Verdejo had a lot of fans out there. Hank Lundy had a lot of fans out there. A lot of fans came from Philly. 
that's the thing with Philly. Like, whenever, if there's any kind of event where it's like a Philly fighter or Philly, anyone from Philly, you know, whether it's a, a, a rap concert, it could be a rapper from Philly, um, you know, battle rap. If you watch battle rap, I'm a big fan of battle rap. So, you know, whenever Philly comes to New York, Philly, the whole Philly comes to New York. Philly always supports their fighters. Danny Garcia, when he has fights up here at the Barclays, Philly comes deep. Everyone comes up from Philly. And there was a lot of, like, I ran into Brian Jennings. He was there with his son. Um, I ran into a whole bunch of people from Philly while I was at the fight. Okay, too many in the name. I saw a lot of people there from Philly. They always come out, support their fighters. That's just what they do. I wish New Yorkers was more like that. Um... But anyway, um, the crowd was great. It was a good time. There was a few fights in the crowd. That was the only thing that was, you know, the bad part about it. It was like three fights, you know. But Philly was loud. The Verdejo fans were loud. And Crawford had a lot of fans, too. Um, if you ever see a Terrence Crawford fight, you notice that they always have the camera on his family. His whole family was there again. And they was just screaming and yelling. I don't know. I didn't see... The, the HBO telecast of the fight. Um, I forgot the DVR. That's stupid. I wanted to watch the fight again, but uh, I forgot the DVR. It's, I, I think it's maybe it's on demand by now. But but anyway, um, I love the, you know, the atmosphere was good. Everything was cool. Um, even the, uh, the show, like I uploaded a couple videos from the fight. Uh, they show like they're really going hard with comparing Terrence Crawford to, uh, uh, what's the name? Marvin Hagler. Okay, they they went hard with that at the show, uh, which is cool. I don't have no problem with it. I mean, it's cool. You know, I mean, the guy is a switch hitter. You know, it's good. You know, but they definitely are going hard with comparing them to Hagler. All right, Terrence Crawford. Um, and he had a lot of fans, and his family was in there going crazy, making all the noise. I don't know if it was his mother or, or who, but she was sit standing, and the security kept telling her that she had to sit down because there's people that paid that was on the floor that was sitting right behind her, and they couldn't see the fight because she didn't care. She just kept getting up. Like I don't know if that was his mom or, or who, but she didn't care. <laughs> it was it was funny. So anyway, let's let's talk about the fights now. Phyllis Verdejo, I watched the fight right. And mind you, when I go to the fights, I pay more attention to when what I see on TV. It's just so much going on at the uh, event. It's hard to pay a lot of attention, full attention to the fights. I mean, I'm, I'm watching it, but it's not like when I'm at home. When I'm at home, I actually pay more attention when I'm watching on my television, the privacy of my own home. Um, but Phyllis Verdejo, he fought a guy that... To me, this is my take on it. And he did win the fight. I don't know what people are saying. I haven't seen any YouTube videos. I don't know what the fans are saying. But this is my take on it from when I was there. Phyllis Verdejo fought a guy that seemed to be pretty skilled. And seemed to be, in person, he looked like he was slightly bigger or at least the same size. Because Verde Verdejo has been fighting guys that he's usually a little bigger than. OK, and the thing is with Verdejo, like the guy in the beginning of the fight, maybe the first couple rounds, Verdejo seemed to be having some issues with this guy. And then out of nowhere, it's just like Verdejo just started coming back. I, I don't know. I, I, I just wasn't really impressed. Um, I just wasn't I, re I really wasn't impressed with Verdejo. OK, um. I know he has the look, okay? Um, I know, you know, Miguel Cotto's on his way out and they're looking for the next big Puerto Rican star. Um, I don't see him, and, and Miguel Cotto's my favorite fighter, you know? You guys know that already. I don't see what I see in, I've seen in Cotto and Tito. I don't see that in Verdejo. And... They should build this guy slowly because I just don't want him to be one of those guys that steps up too quick and he ends up getting dominated by a much better fighter, you know? Uh, he has a lot of things to work on, okay? Um, he has to start expanding his punches, his punch selection, 
okay? Um, too basic. He looked very basic in there. Um, and not just this this fight here, but he needs to, you know, he needs to work on a lot of things, okay? He seemed very basic. And the guy that he was fighting, you know, I don't know if the guy, i never seen this guy fight before. But when the fight first started, it seemed like this guy seemed like he was a little bit more skilled than him in the beginning, okay? Now, as the rounds, rounds went on, you know, I was paying attention to the fight, but I was paying attention to a lot of other things that was going on. And Verdejo seemed to be winning rounds comfortably, but he was still doing the same thing by winning the rounds. Um, I don't know. You know, I just think he need to work on some things. Uh hope they don't rush him to a title shot because I think he needs more work, okay? He definitely needs more work, regardless of what people feel and how top rank is pushing him. He definitely needs more work, okay? Hopefully, he's not rushed uh, into superstardom, all right? Uh, there was a lot of supporters out there, okay? Um, like I said earlier, there was a lot of them out there. I just don't want him to be that next guy that's rushed into someone in the ring with someone. I mean, I, I don't think, I think they're moving him slowly regardless already. But hopefully, you know, as his name grows and people are starting to really pay attention to him now, hopefully, and I'm sure a lot of, of the Puerto Rican fans that came out to see him are fans of Miguel Cotto, are the same fans that come to see Miguel Cotto when he fights in New York. Okay, um, I just hope that they don't rush this kid because I really don't think he's ready to fight the, the elite. Okay, um, now as far as Terrence Crawford and Hank Lundy, yo, you know, it's funny because Crawford does the same thing every fight. Now he comes out orthodox. Lundy was giving him the business in the first round. I mean, Lundy clearly won the first round. I mean, wow, like, you know. And then Terrence Crawford switched it up. I believe he came out in the second round. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I saw Crawford come out in a South Southpaw position in the second round because Lundy was, yo, know, Lundy was giving him work in the first round easily, you know. And uh, Terrence Crawford switched it up, and then the the fight, you know, the second round was more competitive. Um, you know, I think. Most people are, I'm not sure what the judges said, but I think they gave it to Crawford from what I've seen. It was still pretty close in the second round, but as each round went progressed, it was just, it turned into another Terrence Crawford show. And you know what? He did what he was supposed to do. You know, I, I didn't think he would stop Hank that early. I thought it would be in a mid to later rounds. So it was a, a fifth round stoppage. I was thinking more seventh, eighth, ninth round maybe. Um, but he did what he had to do and he looked good. I made a mistake in a prediction video and said that, uh, uh, he didn't stop the Aerie John. He did stop him. I just forgot. You know, I haven't seen the fight since the night of the fight. Um, but yeah, Terrence Crawford, he's good, man. He's really good. And I, I know it was just Hank Lundy, but he stopped him and he stopped him fast before there's a lot of fighters. Hank won, I mean, fought and he didn't win. But he looked good fighting them, or he made them look bad. You know, I've said that in a prediction video. Hank made everybody, no one looked good against Hank Lundy before. Not No one looked good. Even the guys that's beaten him, none of them looked good. And Terrence Crawford looked good against a, fight, a very fast, slick um, boxer. And I was very impressed. You know, and he seems to be almost unbeatable when he, when he goes southpaw. And, uh... I really hope he fights Victor Postal soon. You know, I would, I, would, I would really like to see that fight. I wish we would get Broner against Crawford, but I doubt we get that fight. I don't think we're going to ever get that fight. But I would love to see that fight. That's the fight I want to see right now. Like, I would love to see that fight in 2016. Um, but anyway, um, not much to really speak about the fight. I mean, Terrence Crawford destroyed him, you know. After that first round, it, it was pretty much, you know, all Crawford. Um, but I would like to say that I think the next time, because they did have an undercard that actually brought fans out, 
I think if they're going to have Terrence Crawford come back into New York and fight a, a better fighter at 140 or with a bigger name, I think they should put him in the main garden because the theater looked really, really packed. It looked really like I didn't see any empty seats in there. So even if they don't sell out the bigger garden, and I don't think they're going to sell as much as the Triple G did or a Coda would do, I still would think it would be enough to at least put him in there or put him in the Barclays, you know, because the Barclays is smaller than the Madison Square Garden. I think they should step up and um, give him more space, like a bigger arena, but have a good card. Have Phyllis Verdejo on, on the card. Have, you know, some, you know, some other type of fighters that will bring native New Yorkers to see the fight. You know, with on top of having Terrence Crawford fight a good fighter. You know, I don't know who it's going to be. You know, I don't know if he's going to fight Provotnikov. I don't know if it's going to be Postal. I don't know if it's going to be Matisse. I don't know who he's going to fight next. But whoever he fights, if it's a bigger name, they should try to put it in the more bigger arena or go to the Barclays and have it at that, you know, that place or whatever. Just my personal opinion on based on just some ob observation. Um, uh, shout out before I end this video. I just want to say shout out to Marcus Brown. Uh, I've been telling you guys to watch him, to check him out. He's at 175. If you look him up on BoxFrag, he is actually within the top 10 of the light heavyweights, okay? Um, check him out. If you haven't seen him already, check him out. Um, very, very young, good fighter. Um, me and him actually were sitting right next to each other at the fight, so... Um, we were talking the whole time. We talked about, I'm not going to say everything he said because we were privately, privately talking. We wasn't, and I didn't record him. I didn't do any of that. Um, but we talked about Andre Ward, uh, S Sullivan Barrera. Okay. Um, he lost to Igor Mikolsev in the amateurs. Another guy at 175 you guys should check out. Um, He's looking to, you know, get that that uh, win back if he ever fights him. Okay, he wants to fight him, um, and he wants to fight. You know, you know what? Smart young guy. You know, he's coming up. He's from Staten Island, and um, he he wants to he wants to move up slowly. He's not in a rush to go and fight anyone. Okay, he's he wants to fight the best, but he's not. He wants to improve as a fighter. All right, he did say that to me. Um, so if you are a fan of Marcus Brown, you know, just know that yeah, he's on his way. He's on on his way. He's on his way up. All right. And um, he's looking to move slowly. He's not looking to rush into anything. You know, we talked about Paterbia. We talked about everybody at 175. Um, but shout out to him. He's cool, dude. Um, who else did I see? I saw Saddam Ali. I didn't get a chance to try to talk to him, but he was at the fight, too. I've seen a lot of people at the fight. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Make sure you guys hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I got to do a video on Frampton and Quig. So be on the lookout for that. Peace.